Let's see how sperms are formed. Hypothalamus secretes GnRH which acts on the pituitary to release FSH and LH hormone. LH acts on the leading cells of the testis. You can remember L for L to promote spermatogenesis and FSH acts on the Sertoli cells to release testosterone. This testosterone helps in the secondary sexual characteristics of male and it also helps in promoting spermatogenesis. Now when there are adequate testosterone levels in the body, a negative signal is sent to the brain to stop producing LH and FSH. Similarly, if the testosterone levels fall down, then LH and FSH production is increased. So from our discussion so far, we know that if there is any problem at the hypothalamus or pituitary level, then all the hormones at or below that level are not going to be formed. So LH, FSH and testosterone will be low. This is known as pre-testicular failure or hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Similarly, if there is any problem at the level of testis, then testosterone will be not formed and LH and FSH will be high because there is no negative feedback from testosterone. So question number one over here, how are you going to differentiate between pre-testicular and testicular failure? So it is merely on the basis of hormone levels. Sperm formed in the testis travels to the vas deferens. On the way, seminal vesicle adds a lot of fluid to the sperm. It makes it alkaline and also adds fructose. A block at a post-testicular level means that the sperms have been formed, but it is just that they're not able to travel up. So all the hormone levels are going to be normal because the spermatogenesis has already occurred. But in the question, they can mention that either the volume was low, it was an acidic semen, or the fructose level was absent, or the vas deferens was not palpable. It is pathognomonic of post-testicular failure. So now let's see how many questions we able to solve based on this explanation. The patient has come to us with very low volume of semen. It is acidic, fructose levels are absent, and there is no sperm. All hormone levels are normal. So it is a clear-cut case of post-testicular failure. What is the next best step you are going to do? So next best step is always the clinical examination. So we are going to palpate for the vas deferens. Transrectal ultrasound we will only do if we could not find anything on clinical examination. Karyotyping we will not do because we are not suspecting Klein filters as hormone levels are normal. Testicular biopsy is one thing which will help us diagnose testicular from post-testicular failure. But we will only do that after our clinical examination and after ultrasound. Question number two, what are you not going to do in this patient? We can clearly see that the block is at the post-testicular level. So vasostomy is removal of the blocked piece of the vas deferens and joining the two viable ends. So we can do that. Screening of CFTR will give us a clue about cystic fibrosis and also about bilateral absence of vas deferens. PESA is a treatment method in these patients for infertility. Injection HMG and HCG, we are not going to give that because in these patients, we know that spermatogenesis is already complete and there is no problem with the hormone levels. 